y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. I know they ain't trying to put a dude in the cell with me. That's got titties. They did put a dude in the cell with me. That's got titties. Oh, nah. No, no, no. This can't happen. Ain't gonna happen. I gotta straighten this right now. I had to deal with it. So y'all gonna have to hear about it. You ready? Let's relive it. So, before we get started, because I don't want any hate comment, anybody think I'm being hateful. I don't care what your sexual preference is in this world. Don't come at me with it. Don't come at me sideways. Don't make me feel uncomfortable. And we'll get along just fine. You do what you do over there. I do what I do over here. That is the way prison functions. I've told y'all before that you are who you run with in prison. I've seen dudes that sat out in the pod all day and played Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, these like Harry Potter type games. You kick it with them dudes. You play those games. You're labeled as one of the little nerd guys that plays, you know, the role-playing games. I've seen everything from all the gay guys that hang together, all the guys that got boyfriends, you know, hang together. The gang members flock together. Dudes from certain areas in the city. You might have Tide Water dudes kicking it with Tide Water. Richmond dudes kicking it with Richmond dudes. Guys flock to people they can relate to. They have something in common. Or that reminds them of the people they would somewhat kick it with in the real world. A lot of the lifers stay to themselves. A lot of the lifers kick it with other lifers. Because they've both been down a long time. They've been on several compounds throughout the system. Known each other many years. They know what to expect from these people. So that's who they kick it with. That's how prison is. If you're seen associating with a gay man, talking to a gay man, and this isn't strictly business related, like you're going to have to deal with people at times you don't want to deal with because of the business, the politics, the way things run in prison. If this guy's got something you need or offers a service, not a gay service, it could be sewing, washing clothes, you know, he, he could be the guy that makes candy, then you have to deal with this guy. It's hot in this truck, but they're running saws. If they start the saws up, I have to roll this window back up. So it gets a no-brainer that you are who you kick it with. You are who you hang with. I go to, I well, first of all, my celly TJ, big TJ, rest in peace, TJ, 22nd of T Street out in Churchill. Salute, soldier. Big TJ goes to the hole, bucks on a pancake tray in the chow hall, gets a second tray, big dude, tells these people, nah, I'm eating this. Sat right there and ate the pancakes in front of the so and the sergeant and the guards. And they're like, he's so big, ain't a whole lot they can do, but just let him eat it. And then, you know, ask him, will he let him put the cuffs on him when he gets back to the building? And they did, they locked him up. I believe TJ was the cellmate I had before this happened. Don't quote me on it, but thinking back, I think it was TJ was my last cellmate before I got the guy I was telling you about in the story. So I go out on the weight pit one day, was real big into, you know, lifting weights, pushing steel. That was my therapy. Plus it kept me strong, kept me big. It gave me that, that raw knockout power that pick you up, slam me on your neck, one hit a quitter. And I got that through the strength, you know, a lot of it's from the anger in me, but a lot of it came through the strength of lifting weights all day, getting swole, right? I go out there, and the guy, we got what's called the rec guy, and the rec guy's job is to keep the water coolers full, to go out there and spray all the weight equipment down, the weight benches, the weight bars, we just disinfect it and wipe it with a rag, because staph infection, things of that nature are very rampant in prison. MRSA, 
I've seen some terrible, terrible cases of MRSA on dudes' backs where they lay on sweaty weight benches and might have a pimple on their back. And now they got a crater in their back that they got to go to the hospital for. We get out there on this particular day and we usually start off light. Something, you know, 135 or 175. We'll start off with, that's our warm-up weight, you know. Bang out 20, 25 reps with the 175, 135, something like that. When we get out there, the bar is sitting there and the weights are welded on because um, a dude that got smashed with him, a dude called Smush. So they weld it all the way together. So whatever is laying around, if you can't lift anything that's left behind it, everybody else has already gotten all the weight they wanted. And say the only thing left laying there is the, you know, 315. If you can't lift it, you're hit unless somebody lets you get in with them. Well, I walk over to the 135 bar, picked the 135 up, pretty sure that's what it was. And I was going to rack it onto the bench so we could just do our warm-ups with it. We wouldn't work out with it long, maybe 10 minutes. And then we would go up, you know, to the 225 and up to the 315. I go to get it and I see somebody's towel is on it. And I'm like, yo, who's got the 135? Whose towel's on the And how is there even a towel on it? The only person been out here is a rec guy with a first through the cage. And the rec guy tells me, nah. That's for somebody. They asked me to grab it for him. So just like I'll grab And he would grab me weight. I'd be like, hey, get the 225 for me. I'd yell out the window. He'd throw a towel on 225. That means it belongs to somebody. Well, the red guy was, he was openly gay. He didn't act like a girl, but he looked at the gay guys as females in the relationship. He was like, no, nah, such and such got the weight. So I'm like, all right, man. So I think we grabbed the 175, 185, something like that. We racked that. I would be in the middle of my second set, and they say, last call for weight pit. It's a big cage, like a gladiator arena. Once you go in there, they padlock the gate. You cannot get out. You're stuck. Something jumps off inside of this 20 by 40 foot concrete slab. Your ass is hit. There's nowhere to run. You just got to, once you're locked in, it's go time. As the guard's getting ready to hit, shut the gate, I hear somebody say, hold up, hold up. And I sit up on the bench, tired. I go to get the next, I'm going to spot my homeboy. And I look, and here comes in this boy. A boy is the term we use for a gay man that acts like a female. In comes this boy and everybody's eyes are locked on this boy. Because there's something different about this boy than every other boy walking the yard. This boy was in the midst of getting a sex change and doing all these different things on the streets when he got locked up. Dude he was messing with on the streets was a player, sold a lot of coke. They get pulled one night with some guns in the car, a bunch of cocaine, and they both go to prison. Come find out the boy told on him for a reduced sentence, but he still had to go to prison. I'm looking around at everybody around me because they are like locked. And the boy comes walking in and walks over to the 135. And like I said, this ain't your average boy. This boy has got big ass titties. You can't make this up, man. He's got everybody, the, the dudes that mess with the boys, dang, got a fat ass. They're saying things, and I'm just like, God, I hate my life, man. So the boy goes over, gets the 135, puts it on the squat rack. The rack guy helps him, and is doing squats with him. You know what I mean? He's standing behind him. He's got the, the, the weight belt on. He's standing behind him, holding his waist as dude's doing squats. I get a little agitated, more or less, because I didn't get that weight, and I wanted to, you know, warm up with it, and that dude had kept it for somebody that's really not into working out. This dude's just out there doing squats, trying to get his buns right, get his glutes right, his thighs right. Dudes are on this boy. Weeks would go by, and the other boys hated him. Every, like, every other boy on this compound hated this boy. Because this boy had titties. I guess he got his ass done on the streets, whatever. And he, you got the dudes in there. They're stuffing socks in their shirts to try to make it look like they got tits. Well, this boy shows up and these guys are mad. They're big mad. Like, 
He's done got into several fights now. But keep in mind, just because somebody's gay or trans or whatever, that's still a man. You know what I mean? They, still a chance he could hurt you. And he had rumbled a couple of the other boys and got his thing off, beat him up, right? I didn't really ever, ever deal with this dude. Not really. I never dealt with the dude. Never spoke to him. Kept him moving. I would see him here and there. Well, the wreck dude lives in my pod. This guy I'm talking about, this boy, he lived upstairs above us on another whole floor, whole different pod, nothing connected to where I lived. The pod I lived in was two tiers high. Then there's a solid concrete floor that's another section of the building. And above that is, you know, two more tiers. Got to go up a staircase to get there. So as I told you, my cellmate had went to the hole. I go to visit a room one day. I come back and when you come back, you go to the control booth and you say, hey, William's returning from visit. They always want to know where you're at, where you're coming from. Pop my cell. Well, I look over at my cell door and my door's already open. So I'm going to tell them to open the door and I'm like, why is my door open? I start walking in that direction and my homeboy comes running up to me. He's like, JJ, chill out real quick, man. Let me holler at you. And I'm like, what's, what's up, man? You know what I mean? I'm like looking at him because the way he ran up on me, he's like, man, they put the boy in your cell. I said, they put what? He's like, you know, the boy with the titties? And I'm like, what about him? He's like, they put him in your cell, man. He's like, these dudes down here went to the unit manager and we had a unit manager. I think she's the assistant warden now named Carolyn Parker. And Carolyn Parker loved them gay guys, man. She would always have a bunch of them in her office. They would do little errands for her, like run paperwork from building to building. Like she gave these dudes a lot of power, but she and she messed with these boys. And it was a known fact, not all of them, but a lot of them were into telling on dudes. And that's why they had the power they had, because it's kind of like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. They were blatantly telling. So you knew that if you put your hands on one of them, First of all, you better not lose because everybody's going to joke on you. You ever you forever ever be guy, the guy that got beat up by the gay dude that's supposed to be this big, strong convict, and now you got beat up by a gay dude. Dudes are going to laugh at you. So my homeboy tells me, yeah, man, these, these dudes are here, the right guy. He got him, you know, they got him moved down here. They want him in this pod. These dudes, like, did all this stuff, and he was in your cell. I so, said, hell no, nah, no. Nah. I was not ready for what I walked up on. I was knew 100%. I was going to tell him, hey, homeboy, you can't be in my cell, man. Like, that's the politics. That's the prison politics. That's the code. Everybody knows. Everybody knows me. Everybody expects that if I'm not gay, you're not. I'm not living with a gay man in my cell. That's just a bad look. You already know what everybody thinks. Like I said, this ain't the streets. This is prison. This is it's like the unwritten rule that a gay man cannot live in a cell with a straight man. And if you allow it, you have now labeled yourself as gay. I head towards my cell. I'm unbuttoning my shirt because I don't know how this is going to go. I'm figuring me and dude going to probably end up get to fighting because I'm telling you, you got to get your shit and get out. I'm unbuttoning my shirt and I got a white you know, V-neck underneath my blue penitentiary button. So I'm unbuttoning my shirt. Got my ID clipped to my pocket. I take my blue shirt off. I got it in my hand. And I told y'all several times I wasn't ready. I walk up and this dude is standing in the mirror. Shaving his titties. He is there shaving his little stubble off his man breast. In my cell. Has his stuff put up all over the counters. And this is the part where I like to say I just freaked out right then and there. I walked up and he was like, hey, what's going on? My name is such and such. And when I seen what I saw, walked up and just seen this man standing there with these pair of titties. I just like grabbed my face and like turned around and walked off. Walked underneath the staircase and stood there for a minute like another one of those things. Like, God, why are you doing this to me? Why did you just make me witness this? Why did you just allow me to walk up on this? Why? And this dude was doing this with the door open 
And you got the guys that like the boys walking by looking in. And he 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 peeking at his titties, you know, plotting on who's gonna be his man and whatnot. My homeboy comes over, he's like, everything all right? I see yo, dude is in the cell shaving his titties at the sink, man. He was like, stop. He starts laughing. Stop playing. I said, well, it's not. I'm not laughing, man. This shit ain't funny. He was like, for real? And I'm like, yeah, for real, man. He's like, what you going to do? I said. <laughs> so I go in the cell and dude starts talking to me. And as he's talking, I start grabbing his stuff off the counter and putting it in the middle of his mat. And he's like, what are you doing? Don't, don't, don't touch my stuff, blah, blah, blah. Mind you now, he's standing there with no shirt on with his titties, right? I take everything, put it in his mat. I still ain't said a word to him. I roll the mat up. I walk out in the pile with all his belongings, and I drop the mat in the middle of the pile, right? So he comes out, like, running his mouth and shit. At this point there, that's when we, we get into it. I tell him, man, I'll beat your ass, man. You not, you can't stay in the cell with me. I can do whatever. You, this ain't your cell. I said, I know it ain't my cell, but you're not living in there with me. You can't live in that cell with me. Ain't going to happen, right? So dude is, is, is still running his mouth. He's on one side of the mat. I'm on the other side by now. You know, he's trying to pick the mat up and took the mat back to the cell. I didn't grab the mat out of his hand and slung the mat. And this shit has just went all over the floor. Everybody's watching. I'm squared off with this dude. In the middle of the pod, he's got shaving cream up around his neck on his sides. You know, half shaving razor stubble on his chest. And he's running his mouth. So... I throw my fist up. I'm like, what's up? I run up on him. What's up? Right? A whole bunch of dudes, different dudes I didn't even rock with like that, ran over, grabbed me, and pulled me back. These were all the dudes that wanted him in the pod. These are the, the booty boys, the, the, the ones that go after the boys. They've all run up. like, And these, a lot of these dudes are killers. A lot of these dudes are life. It's like, Jay, chill, chill, chill. You can't be beating the boy up. I said, well, he can't be in my cell, man. Put him in one of y'all's cell, but he's not going in my cell. Y'all know the rules. Y'all know how it goes, man. No. If he even attempts to go back to my cell, you know what I mean? I'm going to smash him. That's just what it is. I go to my cell. His, his razor's laying in the sink. And y'all going to think I'm messed up. But like I told you, it's a different world. This isn't, you know, Richmond I'm talking about. This isn't an apartment complex. This isn't a roommate. This is the penitentiary. I grabbed the shaving razor and the shaving cream that he had sitting on the sink. And I toss it out into the pot. It slides across the floor, right? He's still running his mouth. And I'm telling him, yo, if you want it, come here. Come on, come in the cell. I'll beat your ass, right? Mind you now, these are the first words me and this dude have ever had. And he's been at this prison now. You know, good, maybe a month, right? Guards come in. They didn't see what's going on in the control booth. They see his stuff slung all across the floor. What's the problem? By now, I'm in the cell. They come in the cell. Jay, what's the problem? I say no problem. Well, dude's bringing his stuff back in. Dude's not bringing his stuff back in. Yes, he is. This is our prison. You don't run this. You do what you're told. I said, he's not bringing his stuff back in the cell, man. He's not. It's not happening. Y'all set me up for failure. Could have got me jammed up. I come back from the visiting room having a good day, seeing my son, seeing my mom, and I walk into a dude shaving his titties in my cell. Well, we don't have any other open cells. I don't care what you do. You're not putting him in the cell with me. And if you do put him in the cell with me, I'm beating him up the moment we go in the cell. The moment he comes in here, I'm going to disrag this dude and y'all can come mop him up off the floor because it's not going down. They call the sergeant. They're telling me to cuff up. I'm telling them I'm not cuffing up. I'm not cuffing up. Y'all can't, y'all can't do me like this, man. It ain't going to happen. And we got what's called the, the DOC handbook, the DOP. And it's the procedures. It's the rules the Department of Correction has to go by. I'm a convict. I know this book. I know these codes. I know the rules. So the sergeant comes down. And these officers all know me. And the sergeant said, what's the problem? And I told him, I said, y'all not putting a gay dude with titties in my cell, man. How does that look on me? Y'all causing a whole bunch of problems for me. It's not happening, man. It's not coming in my cell. So the other CO chimes in and sort of tells him, stop. He's right. And he goes, what do you mean he's right? I just finished telling him. I said, look, the DOC handbook says that inmates are safe from sexual harassment and are not to be housed with, you know, openly gay men or men that are gay 
unless they are gay. You don't put a straight man and a gay man in a cell together. They're going to clash. What happens when I come back from the visitor room one day and he's in there with his boyfriend and they got the door shut and they're doing things they shouldn't do. And now I open the door and I walk up and see it. I'm going to spaz out. What happens if I come back and y'all are doing this on my bed? I'm going to spaz out. I'm going to try to kill both of y'all. Then on top of that, he's going to have all the boys that he's now made friends with that he's not got to fighting with over in my cell all the time. So my cell just went from being my cell, where I live at, where I have my comfort at, my little bit of peace, to I got boys at the door all day, boys coming in and out. I got this dude doing sexual activities with whoever he's hooked up with, right? So the sergeant tells him, nah, y'all shouldn't have made this move. Whoever made this bad move needs to reverse it. Find somewhere for him to go that's compatible. Williams isn't moving. He's not wrong. Y'all should have known better. Y'all knew y'all couldn't put him in here with Williams. This might fly with some of these guys, but y'all know Williams ain't going to, he's going to, y'all already knew what was going to happen. So the guards take this dude and they move him back upstairs. You would think that's the end of it. It's not the end of it. It's just the beginning of it. I'm in my cell and I'm standing there talking to my homeboy. And up walks the wreck dude. And the wreck dude is a black dude, good sized dude, been working out a long time, been down over 15 years. And he tells my homeboy, hey, step off real quick, let me holler at Jay. Soon as somebody says, let me holler at you, almost every single time somebody says that, it's bad. You already know your heart starts beating fast, your palms get sweaty, you ball your fist up, your body tenses up. You know that this is about to go to blows. So my homeboy's like, nah, I'm good, man. I say he's good. He can, he can listen. What's up? He's like, nah, I need to holler at you, man. Like, have some respect. Let me holler at G. So I look at my homeboy. My homeboy's standing there thinking, you know, like, fuck that shit. We'll bank his ass. You know what I mean? I'm not with that banking shit. So I tell my homeboy, It'll roll out, man. Roll out. So I told you, I haven't been back from the visit long now. I still got my shoes on and stuff. So I back up to the cell. Dude rushes me. Boom, 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 boom. We go to fighting. We're rumbling, 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 rumbling. We rumble for, I think the first time, it must have been 30, 45 seconds, right? We lock up. I tell him, let me go, let me go, let me go. He's got me in a hold to where I can't really hit him. He can't really hit me. So I'm telling him, let me go, let me go. At this point, I'm not even, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's behind the boy. That's the only thing I think me and dude never had no problems, right? So another dude out in the pod, they're watching us fight. The door's open. All the guards and everybody's on the left by now. Another dude runs in the cell and pulls us apart. When he pulls us apart, dude reaches over top of dude and hits me. Pong! Right inside of my face. That shit, I saw stars, green horses, purple horseshoes, you, you name it. All that shit, like little Tweety Birds floating around your head. When he reached over top of dude and hit me, like I said, dude just separated us. He hit me. I don't know how much time passed, but it felt like an eternity it went by until we went back to fighting again. The dude that broke us up shoved him. I told him, that's some bitch shit. You don't swing, you know what I mean? Y'all line it up. So we go to fighting again. But that hit, I'm not, I can't, I can't lie. That hit did so much damage when he caught me, you know, right above my eye. And so it discombobulated me so bad that as I was throwing punches, it felt like my arms were noodles. You know what I mean? I didn't have all the energy I had a couple seconds ago was gone after that punch, right? So I can't do anything but lock up and hold dude because he is rocking me, fucking me up way bigger than me. Dude comes in the cell and breaks us up again, right? So dude goes out and he's still running his mouth. He goes up the staircase to his cell and I'm standing there checking my eye out. It ain't split, but it's got just a big ass goose egg on top of it. Got a knot on the back of my cheek back here. One of the glands got busted, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm heated, you know what I mean? I, I got my thing off on dude, put some marks on dude, but he definitely just won. So I go back up top. He goes in the cell, shuts the door, and I can hear him up there. And he's arguing with his cellmate. And I can hear what he's saying. Jay got the fucking boy kicked out the pod. Like, you know how hard it was to get him down here? Ra -da 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 -da. So I go to the cell, and I tell dude, hey, open the door. Man, tell your cellmate, step out. Like, I let like five, ten minutes pass so I can get my composure back. Now I'm heated. I go to the side. I tell him, let your homeboy step out, man. Tell your cellmate, come out so I can come in. 
Dude gets up off the bed, goes to his Bama spot, pulls his knife out, says, we ain't fighting no more. We'd have fought twice. We're not going to keep doing this. And I'd had this happen before with his knife shit. He pulls a knife on me and tells me, this ain't happening like this. We're not going to fight and fight and fight and fight. We fought. That's what it is. You did some bitch shit. I said, some bitch shit? Y'all got the boy put in my cell. That's some bitch shit. I came back to a dude with titties, to a dude shaving his chest in my cell, and I'm supposed to be cool with it? So dude was like, look, man, we get to, everything starts to calm down. He's like, look, I shouldn't even have, you know what I mean, acted like that. We should have known better, man. We should have waited until we could have got him moved in my cell or moved in the cell with one of the boys. I guess you're right. That's my bad, man. Just, you know, I fuck with the boy and it had me heated and shit. So everybody sees me now up there trying to run this fight back. So it's not no thing like, oh, he just got beat up. It's, you know, he still wants to fight, right? So dude gets up and he's like, yo, it's a dead matter, man. It's dead. You know what I mean? He's like, we'll dap it up. We'll shake on it. You know what I mean? We ain't never had no problems. We've been in here the longest time around each other. Dude, ain't never had no problems. I said, well, you came down there. You know what I mean? So we need to run it back. You know what I mean? You got me the second time. Let's, let's run it back. He's like, Jay, just leave it alone, man. Leave it alone. It's dead. Man. It's over. I don't want to fight no more. And at that point there, you can do one or two things. You can keep it going and end up with that knife in your chest. Or you can respect what the man's saying and let it go. So he opened the door. I stepped in the cell. He extended his hand. We dapped up. Definitely beat me. 100% he beat me. We dapped up. Everything went back to normal. I'd see dude on the wreck yard. I'd see the boy out there doing the squats, you know, doing his little stuff. Him and the wreck dude would be walking laps together. For the longest time, man, I had homeboys telling me, Man, you need to stab, dude. Just run up on him and just hit him in his neck one time. And when I would think about it, all I would think about is my family, my son at home, and how once I do this, there's no going backwards. This is a place that it's hard to get away with stuff like this. If I do this, I might as well call my people before I do it and say, hey, I'm about to pick up 25 more years because I'm going to stab this dude. Everything went back to normal. Went back to my bed, got a cool dude in the cell with me. Everybody knew who I was, man. Win, lose, draw at the end of the day, you fight. And this dude I was fighting, he wasn't no small dude. I've been beat up by small dudes, beat up by big dudes. Been beat up by short, skinny, fat, you name it. I done lost. I done took my share of L's. And I don't have no problem saying that. Because I don't proclaim to be a tough guy. I don't proclaim... To be a gangster, I'm just a guy that was in a situation that dealt with them in the manner that I had been taught to deal with them. So yeah, that's today's story, man. Walked in a cell to a dude shaving his titties. And ended up having to run with this big ass dude behind not wanting to do with the titties in my cell. Crazy, crazy things, man. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to share this story because I'm sure the trolls could eat it up and say all they want. I'm a solid dude. Just hit 100K. And anybody I've been locked up with that's ever jumped in the comment section, I'll tell you, I'm a solid dude. There's no skeletons in my closet that I ever have to worry about coming out. There's nothing I ever have to worry about being exposed on. And I take pride in that. I take pride in the way I carried myself while incarcerated, and I take pride in who I am in today's world. But anyway, these institutions, these jails, prisons, detention centers, they're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And as always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. To all my real ones and awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.